Hello Infoperson, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the news coming from NASA itself. Because the famous Parker Solar Probe that was launched to study the Sun a few years ago has finally crossed the threshold where it sort of unofficially touched the Sun. At least that's what NASA called it. And that's because it actually passed through the part of the Sun that we refer to as Corona. In the process discovering some really interesting things about the Sun. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the idea of the structure of the Sun and why exactly NASA referred to this as touching the Sun. So first of all, unlike planets, the Sun itself obviously does not have a solid surface. And the region around the Sun that we kind of refer to as the surface of the Sun is essentially composed of different convection cells of plasma and it's actually known as the photosphere. And all of these cells in the photosphere are formed by the convective zone right underneath the surface. This relatively large zone you see right here that starts at around 70% the radius of the Sun. Underneath it you'll find the radiative zone, where most of the heat transfer occurs in one direction, it's radiated out, whereas in the convective zone it circulates around, creating what's known as the convection cells. Here's another way of looking at this from the side view. And so essentially in the convective zone a lot of this circulates around producing the cells we see on the surface and the radiation zone here simply radiates the heat away. With the core itself being right in the middle and that's where all of the nuclear reaction occurs. But notice how even in this image there's something else right above the photosphere, the corona. And it's this corona that the Parker Solar Probe recently got to touch. Or essentially pass directly through it making this a really important and somewhat groundbreaking achievement because in essence it is like touching the Sun. Because, like I mentioned before, the Sun doesn't really have a true surface. As a matter of fact, the corona itself can be seen as the top of that surface as well if you were to sort of use gravity as the definition of where the surface starts. This is actually one of the many images produced by different astronomers showing us exactly where corona sort of starts and it's usually seen during the total solar eclipse. And first of all, well, the thing is we don't really understand much about this region at all. One of the biggest mysteries discovered a few decades ago is that apparently Corona is much 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 hotter than the surface or the photosphere of the Sun. The photosphere only reaches a few thousand degrees in temperature. Corona on the other hand increases in temperature up to 2 million degrees Fahrenheit or just over a million degrees Kelvin. This video from the University of Michigan explains this in a little bit more detail. And so by modern definition, the surface of the Sun in a sense is really the end of the corona. And it's because right beyond this point right here, that's where the solar wind emerges and starts blowing out a lot of different charged particles all across the solar system. And so for many years now, the scientists have been trying to figure out, so first of all, where exactly does this corona begin and where exactly does the official surface of the Sun stop? And this particular region today has a name. It's known as the Alphen Point. Named after this wonderful person, Hannes Alfen, the Swedish electrical engineer and Nobel Prize winner who essentially defined the ideas behind so-called Alfen waves and explained a lot of phenomena in plasma physics as well. And so in modern solar studies, a lot of the investigations suggested that this so-called Alfen critical point lies approximately 10 to maybe 20 radii of the Sun away from the center of the Sun. And one of their primary reasons for this mission was to actually discover what exactly is happening in the corona, where it starts, and any other potential mysteries we might discover while doing all of this. And it really didn't take this probe very long to discover some of the major mysteries around the solar corona, but already find some of the solutions to these mysteries as well. And more importantly, in April of 2021, it officially passed through the corona, defining its limit. With the limit currently established at being approximately 19.7 radii. But it's really important to understand that this is not a permanent or a solid structure. It always changes, it also changes with the activity from the Sun, and more importantly, it actually is somewhat unequal in shape. In other words, the corona itself is not truly spherical. It sort of wobbles around, it has a lot of different instabilities, and so even though the initial radius was 19.7 solar radii, it did drop down to about 18.4 solar radii, so it does change quite a lot. And that's equivalent to a distance of about 13 to maybe 14 million kilometers, or roughly around 40 times the distance of the Moon from planet Earth. But also because this is just the first approach and there are going to be 26 close approaches in the next few years, it's going to allow us to investigate this in more detail and possibly discover a lot more things about the solar corona as well. 
As a matter of fact, the probe is going to be using Venus for an assist maneuver or a slingshot maneuver to decrease its speed even more and to drop even lower toward the Sun, or basically enter the corona at an even deeper level, allowing us to possibly find even more stuff. And this time, it looks like the probe got to spend roughly around 5 hours inside the solar atmosphere or the solar corona, allowing the scientists to take some really interesting pictures and interesting videos, with some of them visible right here. This is an intriguing picture of what the scientists are referring to as the coronal streamers, the powerful streams of magnetic particles that are usually seen when we take pictures of the solar corona, but this time it was seen by flying directly through them. And at the same time, the probe also got to measure the magnetic field and even sample some of the particles present in both regions. And a lot of these early measurements clearly suggested that, as we suspected, the often critical point, the surface of the Sun, is not smooth at all, it's extremely wrinkled. And it looks like it's these streamers right here that seem to influence the overall shape of the surface of the Sun itself, or the often critical surface. Or at least that's the initial implication here. In other words, the surface of the solar corona was clearly deformed, but it's just not clear what exactly is causing these deformations. Interestingly though, when the probe was inside these streamers, everything seemed to have calmed down. But as soon as you leave one of these streamers, everything becomes extremely chaotic. On the other hand, during its passage, it also finally got to investigate these unusual phenomena you see right here, known as the switchbacks. It's essentially a kind of an unusual magnetic field phenomenon, where the field itself seems to kind of switch back and forth as the probe is flying through it. And it wasn't really clear what exactly forms this, or at least it wasn't clear until relatively recently. Now, through the investigations of the surface of the Sun, the scientists realized that a lot of these switchbacks are most likely from the actual cells in the photosphere, and the most likely way that they're produced is from the cell interaction that ends up producing a lot of funnels between them, and the very hectic interaction between these funnels. Or at least that's the initial explanation for now. Chances are that as probe passes close to the sun even more, we might be able to discover the true origin of these unusual phenomena. Although interestingly, this is probably one of the main reasons why solar wind is produced and how it's able to spread beyond the solar corona. These unusual imperfections and a lot of these interactions between the cells and these various switchbacks end up creating so many imperfections on the surface of the solar corona that some of the wind ends up escaping which then travels across the solar system. But with time and with help from Venus, the probe is going to end up approaching the Sun even closer. As a matter of fact, roughly around 1 million miles or about 1,500,000 kilometers closer than the current record as of December of 2021. So basically, we only have more to learn and by the time that it reaches the record, it's going to be about 9.8 solar radii away from the Sun which will definitely help the scientists figure out all of these mysteries behind the solar wind, behind the solar corona, and possibly answer a lot of questions we could never really answer. For example, can we actually use these probes and observations from the surface of the sun to basically predict all of the solar system weather, cosmic weather, or solar weather? Because of the effects from various coronal mass ejections, predicting solar weather today, especially for the future of humanity if we want to end up traveling across the solar system, is extremely important. Some of these coronal mass ejections are so powerful that they can easily disrupt even some of the most well-protected spacecraft or colonies on Mars or on the Moon. And so this probe, the Parker Solar Probe, is actually one of the more important missions NASA has launched in the last few decades. By being able to predict the solar weather, we'll definitely prepare ourselves better here on planet Earth and for the interplanetary travel as well. But all of this means learning more about the Sun itself, understanding its corona, and figuring out what parts of the Sun are responsible for creating a lot of these powerful missions that we usually refer to as coronal mass ejection. But I guess for now, the mystery of Corona and the mystery of various events in the Corona are still not truly well understood. It's only been a couple of years since we discovered some of these really unusual phenomena and it will probably take a few more years to finally conclusively explain all of this and how all of this works around our Sun and of course around other stars as well. Although I guess by being able to touch the Sun finally, it sort of makes it a big deal. The only spacecraft to have achieved that ever. And that is a pretty big achievement for humanity as a whole. Well, on that note, as we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. You can also check out some of the previous Parker Solar Pro videos somewhere right there. But 
subscribe, share this video, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.